<laughs> well, yeah. Well, art should make you laugh. Yeah. Art should make you laugh. Yeah, yeah. It should be like good bread or something like that. It should, uh, you know, uh, make you feel better. Well, or make you feel worse. <laughs> but it should make you feel something. I had a phone call from Alita Pierce, who asked me to come out to the museum and the arena and wouldn't tell me what it was about. So I came out to the arena and we went inside and it was knee deep in peewee hockey players and swirling mist and mercury vapor lights. And Alita then said, we want to change this into an art gallery. And I sort of thought she was joking initially and then after a moment realized she wasn't and she was deadly serious and then always wanted to take on a challenge, I said, Sure, we can do this. So that was great, um, and started off on 10 years of fun. I remember when we started, it was such um, an unknown quality and quantity, and how was it going to work, and how would we adjudicate? And Alita Pierce, of course, had you know wonderful ideas. Her organizational skills were just calm and smooth, and we can make it work. And how can you have an art show in a hockey arena, for heaven's sakes? You know? But uh, it all came together magically, and it was... Um, it was thrilling. You know, my first introduction to beauty, I think, was as a small child. We lived in Cecinus by the harbor. And I would get up and walk down to the waterfront early in the morning and watch the sun rise over the hills. And I loved it so much. I think I've always been attracted to, to that type of beauty. The whole point with the initial design was to make people forget that they were in an arena. And so... Uh, I created a design with view lines so you could see through, but wherever you looked, the view lines were stopped by something before you got to the boards of, or the bleachers. Um, and there was light fixtures that were hung low and then tents, and everything was designed to make you forget that you were in an arena. But design for me is, I don't know, art, design, and being comfortable in a room is the most important thing. And using the local, you know, people that are so creative and so fantastic. And so, yes, I love it. One of the things that I wanted very much to do was to reflect souk. And so that's why we used the cedar and we used the lattice work and we brought in the plants and the trees um, to make it an exciting place to come for people in the summer. Like there was a reason to come to the to the to the arena for the Souk Fine Art Show. Um, it was meant to be exciting and celebratory of art. I remember I participated in the very first Souk Fine Art Show as an artist. I made a painting especially for it. It was a painting of Milne's Landing, the place where people buy ice cream cones on their way to the Souk potholes. And I should, would show up on Monday morning, and asked to be left alone for a couple of hours with all the art leaning against the boards and benches and chairs. And then about noon, the volunteers would come in, I would be there, and then we would start placing all the artwork. And I placed it for a variety of reasons. I placed bigger things at the ends of far corridors. Um, I grouped things by uh, theme. So there would be an architecture pod or a portrait pod or a sea life pod. Um, and the art sort of fell into place about where you would arrange it because it was sympathetic. And if people liked portraits, they, they hung, a long t hung around a long time in that pod. Um, and people who liked architecture liked that. And right from the start, it was successful with the, with the business um, purchaser, purchase awards. And I could basically guarantee that if I had a big painting on an end wall with a spotlight on it, it would sell. Once we had decided to try to follow the, the format of the BC Festival of the Arts, we thought, well, you know, if BC can do it, we can do it in Souk. We have this tradition of volunteer spirit. So we then approached people for help. I remember Alita phoned me one time and said, uh, we need some security people. We think you could do security for the, for the thing, because I was working all day, right? And, uh, and so I said, yeah, what's that entail? And she said, well, you need to come at around 10 and then leave it around four when somebody else will come. Oh. And so I said, oh, yeah, I figured I'll have a snooze, right? You know? Well, I get there at 10 o'clock, and uh, 
there's she's the lady says to me, Oh, Gary, have you ever done a bank deposit? And I said, oh, Yeah, I've done bank deposits. And she said, Well, there's three days bank deposits there <gasps> need to be done. So uh, until four in the morning, I counted money and uh, did three bank deposits. I remember in particular Jimmy Wright, whose uh, cedar boxes with photographs of fish on them were the People's Choice Award winner in that first year. Jimmy went on to quite an amazing career from that point on. There were a number of other artists in Souk who made baskets woven out of bull kelp, an art form particular to Souk and uh, one which has uh, cropped up again and again in the repertoire of uh, many uh, weavers. To see lights on your stuff, I mean, suddenly, you, you know, that, that basket that you thought was fairly weird now looks really good. There it is sitting on its own little stand and it's got lights on it and there's your name and... Yes, and that was very exciting. It was a lot of fun. We had no idea what what was going to happen, but it was like a gather with people we knew and new people from uh, Victoria, and yeah, it was fun. And the um, my first real memory was Alice McLean's pottery. Uh, Fountains. I mean, I just thought they were just so beautiful, right in the main part. Working. And working, working, yes, they yeah. were, and they had rocks, and they were gorgeous. Yeah. I think I was 12 years old, um, and I entered the first two uh, silkscreen prints that I ever made. There was a swan and a mountain goat. The design was designed to be supportive of the art, and that's the way good design should be. It should be, you hold on to your... Um, initial goal, which is make it a great gallery, and then the art should shine, and the design should be a wonderful background. And that's, that's how I think it turned out. I was really pleased with that. One of the funny uh, things I remember was uh, one day in the middle of the week, first week I think of the show, um, there was a terrible storm, which is unusual for Souk. There was no electricity. Everything went pitch black. And there was a whole lineup of people waiting. And of course, I think some of them had paid, I don't know, but they were waiting anxiously. But I think the electricity was off for quite a while. So we thought, well, what do we do? Because they're here, we have to do something. So we went and got some flashlights all over the place, and I remember Vern was part of that. We'd take two, three people and go from one picture to the other and say, what do you think? And they'd say, oh, I like that one. Is it okay if we move? Yes. And we did the whole show like that, the whole afternoon. <laughs> they were all pleased. It was good fun. Anyway, so they didn't miss it. And I think it was quite original to have a show in darkness. I always say that I have probably 21, 22 shows under my belt. <laughs> and I would certainly like to get in and do something this year. I, I can't really say what I'd be able to do, but uh, I would like to get in and help. I had a long run sort of as a show designer, uh, basically working with the, the original uh, set up for the show that Stuart Stark had, had created initially. Bob and I spent many hours together putting up the show. It was, um, you know, a typical day went from 11 in the morning till 2 to 3, um, and then the last day would be um, anywhere from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I think one of the worst was we were 15 minutes late opening at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'd been working 24 hours. It was organized chaos, but there was no stress. Bob was um, just methodical, figure out where you want to hang and we, we hung them one at a time. The volunteers are the key to that exhibition and I think that you know, I, I'm sure lots of people have, have either stumbled upon that show or when they've come upon it for the first time, 
they thought, why don't why don't other places do this type of thing? Well, there's a reason other places don't, and the, and the reason is that they can't get that many volunteers together to support oh, yeah. such a huge enterprise as that. But I think Silk Fine Arts is one of those shows that the more you give to it, the more you get, the more you feel like it belongs to you. And that's the thing about the show, it, it belongs to everybody and, and to the community. I was na pretty close to neighbors with Kenny Jones and um, in the summertime I always knew he, I could find him at the arena or on the way to pick something up for the show or coming home late from the show. So. Um, yeah, there's an awful lot of people in the community that have done so much for over the years. It's the people that come out to volunteer, whether they're 12 to 82 years old, that help in so many aspects to put that on. Yeah, I remember volunteering more than anything in the early days when they had these, uh, were setting up those panels and just heavier than hell, you know. <laughs> And it was such a pain. And then finally we got the prisoners from Wilkinson Road there to help us out. Oh, what a <laughs> glad to see the young backs doing that stuff. <laughs> well, I since found the easy jobs. It's a uh, doing intake. You get to look at everybody's stuff and you don't have to carry much heavy. And just, you know, not put your fingerprints on the, on the picture. Where are my gloves? The gloves were, when did the gloves come in? The other legacy to Sue Fine Arts credit is they asked us to put together an exhibit installation and handling manual that I've never been asked for before, um, but I think is really, really good so that all of the people from the executive all the way through to the volunteers get a basic idea of how to care and handle artworks. The artwork that makes up the show is inspiring and creative and really enjoyed by everyone who visits the show. But when you're behind the scenes, what you see and what you appreciate are the people that are involved. And it really does take an entire community to put on this show. Projects are not about the product you produce. It's never about the product. It's always about the people that you deal with when you go through that whole process. I think for soup, the entire community has embraced this show. They see it part of our cultural landscape, and it's a big part of the identity of who we are in this region. It's great. To Souk Fine Arts' credit, they have done their very best to bring a higher and higher professional standard to the handling of the artworks, to the installation of the artworks, and to the care of the whole process of what, of what occurs. And in the end, when you put all that together, you end up with what I think to be a pretty unique project. Pretty unique not only to, to Vancouver Island, but also to British Columbia, and I would suggest even Canada. Still, there are people who wonder how an art show can be put in a hockey arena. But for those who've never been there, you just can't understand how uh, thoroughgoing the uh, design setup of the show is. I think the other question that uh, often people say, well, how do you choose art? You have to love it with your guts. That's the only criteria, not because it has a famous name, not because somebody told you that you should like it. You should really like it. If it's good, not good, tacky. If you love it, buy it.